how is the universe expanding? Let's answer this by looking at a differential equation from the International Physics Olympiad. This video is a collaboration between myself and the amazing Dr. Payam, and I would like to say many thanks for having me on this show. If you are interested in more physics problems, have a browse from my channel, Z Physics. Now, first off, I want you to imagine a sphere of radius, but not a normal radius, a radius which is a function of time. We can imagine that sphere is expanding. The radius of the sphere, RT, can be represented by a scale factor AT, which only depends on time, and a spatial factor RS, which only depends on space. Our task is to determine the value of the constant A1 in this famous equation known as the Friedman equation. In order to derive this equation, what we need to do is consider the energies within the system. In physics, the total energy U will be equal to the sum of the kinetic and the potential energies of the system. Mathematically, we can just write that the total energy, let's call that U, will be equal to the kinetic, which for a test particle of mass m will just be equal to a half times the mass times the speed. But hang on a minute, speed is just the rate of change of displacement, so what we can just say is that this will be equal to the time derivative of the radius, because remember our radius is now a function of time, so we can take the time derivative of that and then we can square it. This is just the kinetic energy though. We need to take into account the potential energy. In physics, the potential energy of a system, the gravitational potential energy, is actually negative to represent the attractive nature of gravity. So this will be equal to minus gm multiplied by the mass. This mass here, by the way, is the total mass of everything contained within the universe, divided by uh, r of t. Now our task is to get those two equations into a form such as this one above. What I will do first would be to multiply both sides by 2 and then divide by m. So what we're going to get is 2u divided by the mass will be equal to r dot, which is a function of time, and this is squared, and uh, then we're going to take away minus gm, and uh, we're going to need a factor of 2 here, and then we're going to be dividing that by rt. Remember, mass is equal to density times volume, and also the density is in this original expression. So I can just multiply that by the volume of a sphere, which is just 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, let's plug this into here, and the expression that we're going to get is that 2u over m is equal to r as a function of t, dot squared take away, and then we're going to have 2g over rt. And our expression for m is just rho, then we have 4 thirds pi, and then rt cubed. Now we can do one of my favorite things in calculus and in maths, and that would be to be cancelling terms out of an equation. So we can cancel out this rt here, that will leave us a square here. Okay, well, we're starting to get there. Let's just tidy this expression a little bit more. So what I'm going to get is 2u over m is equal to r dot of t squared take away um, now 2 times 4 is going to give me 8g, then get a factor of pi, and uh, then I have rho, then I'm going to be dividing that by 3, and that's multiplied by r of t squared. Remember though, r is a 
function of both a, the scale factor, which tells us how the universe evolves, and rs, which is just the spatial coordinate. It tells us how the value changes with time. So let's plug this and put that into here. What we're going to get then is that 2u over m will be rt squared, which is just going to be um, a as a function of t, dot, multiplied by rs. Now rs does not really depend on time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that outside of derivative, so I'm going to say rs squared times a as a function of t um, squared, uh, like so, and then we're going to take away 8 over 3 g pi Rho, and then we have r of t squared, so uh, this will just give us r s squared times a t squared. Now what I'm going to do is divide r by r s squared and a t squared both sides in order to get this equation for the expansion of the universe. So a bit of algebra, we're going to get 2u over m, so divide both sides by rs squared, so then a t squared will be equal to a dot, which is a function of t, this expression is squared, divided by a is a function of t, squared, we're definitely getting there, it's already starting to look like that expression, take away 8 over 3 g pi rho, and um, that's, uh, that's it. Okay, perfect. So now what I'm going to do is just simply rearrange it into this format, and what I'm going to get is that a as a function of t squared over a t squared is equal to plus 8 over 3 g pi rho plus 2u over m r s squared a t squared. So we have successfully found the value of our constant to be 8 over 3 g multiplied by pi. In the equation that we have derived, a1, the constant, is 8, 3, g times pi. And we've already scored our marks for this part of the question, but we're going to take this further because we're really, really curious people and we're really interested in the fate of the universe. Uh, according to our derivation, we can say that minus k times c squared, where c is the speed of light, will have to be equal to plus 2u over m, meaning that this parameter k will be equal to 2u over m c squared, with a little negative sign. This parameter k actually determines the ultimate fate of the universe. Think about this, if overall k is positive, those two terms are going to have opposite signs, meaning that the universe will eventually halt its expansion, its current expansion, then will start retreating and reversing. If k, on the other hand, is negative, and our data seems to suggest so, this means the universe will keep on expanding forever. The actual process behind it is not very well understood and we've had to invoke a concept known as dark energy which is one of the biggest mysteries of the universe. Hopefully you've enjoyed looking at the fate of the universe using differential equations. I would like to once again thank Dr. Payam for hosting me on this channel. It is an amazing place to look at some spectacular maths by an amazing mathematician. Now, if you have found this interesting, have a browse through my channel where I'm going to be looking at the second Friedman equation invoking relativity to see how the universe evolves. And if you enjoy this, you really enjoy that. And I shall see you in the next video.